Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Pokemon champions are almost always some of the most interesting characters in every game. Almost. And as such, they have tons of interesting facts and trivia revolving around them. So let's dive into some cool facts about every Pokemon champion. The first champion we'll be discussing here is Blue, because he's the first champion. I think. They actually never clear up if Lance was the champion beforehand and if he just got booted down a peg, which if that's the case, who is the Elite Four member at the bottom who got booted out entirely? I don't know, so we're not gonna talk about that. Blue is tied with Red for the most appearances in all Pokemon games, appearing in 18 different titles altogether, including 6 of the 9 generations so far. They both barely edge out Giovanni who appears in 16 different games, with the only difference being that he missed Sun and Moon where Red and Blue showed up. Across these many games, Blue has built himself quite the impressive resume as he's the only trainer to be classified as a rival, a gym leader, and a champion. In today's economy, this would get him a minimum wage job at McDonald's. In Japanese, Blue is the only character who actually shares the same name as his gym badge, as the Earth badge given out the Viridian Gym is called the Green Badge, and Blue's name is Green, obviously as a reflection of the Red and Green games released in Japan. Even in English, though, Blue and his anime counterpart continue the family trend of being named after trees, as both Blue Oak and Gary Oak, spelled with an extra R, but we can overlook that, are actual types of oak trees. If I had to guess, this was definitely not intentional, but it sure makes for a funny coincidence. Plus, in the anime, Gary actually follows in his grandfather's footsteps to become a researcher, so it's oddly fitting in a way. And while this is not officially documented, Blue likely has the shortest tenure of any Pokemon champion in history, defending his title for about 10 minutes and zero battles before Red came along. And while Red dethroned him and technically became a champion, we already covered him in the protagonist video, so go check that out if you haven't already. I know, shameless plug it all, but if I didn't disclaim that, then people were gonna ask, I could just feel it. Moving on to Lance, including Pokemon Stadium 2, Lance has used the most pseudo-legendary Pokemon of all trainers, including Dragonite, Tyranitar, Salamence, Garchomp, and Hydreigon. While Lance's path to becoming a champion is somewhat complex in the games, in the anime, it's even more complicated. According to Lance's many introductions of Pokemon Journeys, Lance was the champion of Kanto at the beginning of the series, but later on in the series they refer to him as an Elite Four member. Just before the Masters 8 arc begins, Lance is then reintroduced as a NEW champion, implying that he did indeed lose the title but gained it back off screen. Despite Ash knowing Lance for the longest period of time, he was actually the only member of the Masters 8 bracket who Ash never fought against at any point in time. And while in the games it appears that Raihan and his trainer's outfits were influenced by Lance's attire from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, in the anime, Lance states the opposite, saying that his attire takes inspiration from the Hammerlock Gym. In the games, he engages in the most different forms of battles with the player among all champions. At first in the Rocket HQ, he joins the player as a teammate in a multi-battle against Team Rocket. Later at the Pokemon League, he engages in a typical single battle against the player, and in the post-game at Dragon's Den, he will once again take part in a multi-battle, but this time as the player's opponent. But while Lance did it the most, Steven was actually the first champion that joined the player in a multi-battle in Pokemon Emerald. Okay, he technically wasn't the champion at the time, but you get the point. In this multi-battle, if you use a Pokemon with the Guts ability at the same time that Steven Skarmory is on the field, there's actually a good chance that Steven will use Toxic on your Pokemon to activate its Guts ability. I know, because this actually happened for me twice with my Heracross. Yeah, I healed off the poison, and he did it again. Guy's kind of a jerk like that. Give it a try if you have a copy of Emerald lying around, it's pretty cool to see. And definitely gives you the vibe that this guy is a Giga Branch trainer. Also, if you trade in a Pokemon with the move Die after Ruby and Sapphire and leave the HM in Steven's house, then when you visit his house to claim the gift Beldum in the postgame, he'll say in his note, if you'd like, you should also take the HM Dive. This is an extremely rare line of text that hadn't been recorded until very recently, despite the games being 20 years old. And in Pokemon Masters EX, Steven is voiced by Xander Mobus, which means he shares the same voice actor with the announcer from Super Smash Bros. and Joker from Persona 5. Just a tidbit to think about. In the timeline of the games, while the Delta episode from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire strongly implies that Steven passed the title of Hoenn Champion onto Wallace in Pokemon Emerald, in the anime, the opposite happens. As Wallace is actually introduced as the first champion of Hoenn in the Diamond and Pearl series, but by the time Pokemon XY rolled around, Steven had replaced Wallace as champion. Wallace even confirms this himself when he makes his singular appearance later in Pokemon Journeys, calling himself a former champion. Insulted that Ash doesn't instantly recognize him, he challenges Ash to a battle and promptly loses, making him the first champion, current or former, to lose to Ash. Cynthia gets around quite a bit in the Pokemon world. Although she's the champion of Sinnoh, she also makes appearances in the Johto, Unova, and Alola regions in the games. Her appearance in Pokemon Black and White is actually teased in the post-game of Pokemon Platinum. 
where she'll visit the player's villa in the resort area and state, It's so relaxing here. Sigh, I don't want to go home. It's a complete mess with all my research papers strewn about. My house? Even the region is a secret. And, well, while it's a good tease, it's not entirely accurate. As in black and white, she actually says that the villa she's staying in belongs to Caitlyn. I'm still going to assume that the tease was originally intended for Unova, though, and not random Generation 12 region that we don't even know about yet. I don't even think Jinichi Masada has that much foresight. While many champions frequently will only use Pokémon introduced in their generation for their first battle, Alder keeps his regional pride alive in all subsequent battles. Being the only champion to ever use Pokémon exclusively from his home region and his home region alone. In the Villain Facts video, you may recall how the ancestors of Maxi and Archie can be seen in the Diamond and Pearl Clan homes in Legends Arceus. But present in both villages is a portrait of a man who appears to be Alder's ancestor. Perhaps this is a tease for a future Legends game set in Unova? Even if not, why is this one man the person who briefly united both clans? Speaking of people Alder bears a striking resemblance to, he is also oddly similar looking to Cypher Admin Dakeem from Pokémon Colosseum with the wild red hair and a chain of Pokeballs around his neck. Colrus from Black 2 and White 2 also bears a striking resemblance to Ayn from Colosseum, so it's very possible that Unova's character designers were inspired by this game. Hey, real quick, if you're on desktop, close out of the full screen of this video, because when I say the word subscribe, the subscribe button is gonna light up, and it's cool, and you should probably click it too. That would be awesome, thanks! Iris is the only champion in Pokemon Masters EX who isn't considered 5 stars in all of her outfits. As in her basic gym leader attire from Black and White, she's only ranked as a 3-star unit, despite her still canonically being a champion during the events of the game. This was later rectified with the release of Iris' champion alternate costume, which has since been renamed to simply Iris Alt, possibly to avoid any confusion with the new Neo champion outfits that have recently been introduced. Diantha is the only human character aside from Red or Leaf to make an appearance in the Super Smash Bros. series as her face can briefly be seen on a billboard in the Prism Tower stage in both Smash Brothers for 3DS and Smash Ultimate on the Switch. However, in Pokemon Masters EX, Diantha took the longest time to appear in the game of all the champions in the first seven generations, not making her debut until 580 days after launch, despite being present on the title screen of the game for that entire period. Up next is Trace, and my fun fact for this guy is that nobody likes him. In the games, Leon is constantly hyped up as the unbeatable champion, but the anime takes this hype even further. According to the Koro Koro magazine released prior to the Masters 8 arc, Leon had apparently never lost more than two Pokémon in a single battle. He's also one of only five characters to ever successfully use Ash's counter shield technique, the other four being Dawn, Brock, Paul, and of course, Ash himself. He's the only character not present in the Diamond and Pearl series to do so. In the Japanese version of the anime, he's also voiced by Daisuke Ono, who many of you watching probably know as the voice of Jotaro from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah, you probably didn't expect a JoJo reference in your JPR video, but it was me, Leon! Mustard is the only officially recognized champion, current or former, to ever use a legendary Pokémon in battle. Because, well, although N did defeat Alder, he renounced the title of champion, so per the record book, he doesn't really count as much as I'd like him to. In the Pokémon Twilight Wings miniseries, he's also voiced by Sungwon Cho, also known as the popular YouTuber ProZD, proving that there is value in being a YouTuber after all. Sometimes. Peony is the only champion who has never fought with a full team of six Pokémon. At most, he only ever uses five in his rematch of the Max Layer. He and Iris are also the only champions to specialize in a type that another champion before them already specialized, those being Dragon and Steel. The badges on display at Nimona's house are very different looking from the ones the player obtains during the story of Scarlet and Violet. While it's entirely possible that these badges could be from another region, if they are from Paldea, this would be the only instance of gyms updating their badge designs over time. Nimona's house also oddly displays an abstract painting of Ash Greninja, despite the form no longer existing in the games. So, this family is full of strange secrets. And due to her unique double role as both a rival and a champion, she's the only champion fought multiple times throughout the main story. She was also the very first Generation 9 character introduced to Pokémon Masters EX, and the first to have the role of Sprint. Although not all of Gita's Pokémon are from Paldea, her six Pokémon represent the six different biomes of the Paldea region. Espathra for the desert, Gogoat for the mountains, Veluza for the sea, Avalug for Glaciado Mountain, King Gambit for the bamboo groves, and Glamora for Area Zero. This unfortunately does not change the fact that her team sucks, but it is what it is. But hey, that's the end of this one. If you enjoyed, then be sure to leave a like, subscribe for more videos just like this one, and I'll see you guys next time.